to start this series, I'm going to give you a summary about hemodynamic shock. When I talk about hemodynamic shock, really shock is a big umbrella term. There's lots of different types of shock. And so I'm just going to kind of touch on each of those varieties and then we'll talk about each of them in more detail later on in this playlist. So the first type is cardiogenic shock. What this means is the heart is not able to work effectively and so therefore you're in shock because you're not getting uh, your blood pressures are dropped and because your heart's not able to push the blood to produce those pressures. So one with the heart being in this kind of shock, well myocardial infarction has damaged the heart, the heart is just in heart failure so just overall isn't working well, or if the heart's in a dysrhythmia uh, which is making it pump in a fashion that's not effective. There's hypovolemic shock and this is you don't have enough volume uh, whether this is blood or other fluids in your vessels and so this could be caused due to uh, diuresis if the patient is having too much uh, urination or they're on uh, too many diuretics that's not being monitored if the patient has severe vomiting or diarrhea um, if their person has a trauma and had blood loss if they've uh, and it's only got to be 10 to 15 percent of the patient's total uh, blood volume and they can go into hemodynamic shock or hypovolemic shock. Uh, another type of hemodynamic shock is the obstructive variety. And so this would be there's some sort of an obstruction in the blood vessels that is making it to where the blood's not going where it needs to go and basically leading the patient to shock. So, so for example, pulmonary embolism. And this is a an embolism is a blood clot, that, and embolism meaning it's moved to the pulmonary, to the lungs. So pulmonary embolism is a blood clot in the lungs, is blocking off the main arteries and, ve and veins to the, the lung so it's no longer able to exchange oxygen and get oxygen to the blood or an aortic dissection so this is the aorta actually like ruptures and so yeah the heart's working fine there's plenty of volume except for it's just leaking into the body cavities and the blood's not going where it needs to go and blood pressure is just plummet because there's nothing going to the vessels and the last uh, type or category is uh, distributive and what this means is all the blood vessels have lost their um, tightness and they've all just opened up wide open so the blood that's going through there doesn't put very much pressure anymore because the vessels are wide open and so there's less pressure because it's just wide open. So except for example, anaphylaxis. There is so many uh, hormones going through the body that are inflaming every all the blood vessels so wide open that the, the, the blood pressure just drops because there's no more tone to the vessels. Same thing with sepsis. With sepsis, they're trying to fight the wide stream uh, blood infections, and so all these mediators going through the body are opening up all the blood vessels and causing lots of inflammation. And neurogenic is a little bit different than these two in that it's not uh, inflammation per se, it's that the vessels are losing their, the, the, um, neuro, the neurological receptors that are telling the vessels to stay tight to keep the blood pressure high. Uh, so there's a spinal cord injury, for example, and all the nerve uh, innervation that's telling it to stay tight just opens wide open. And so what happens is all the vessels, you know, will just go open up, blood pressures will plummet. And so you can see there's a bunch of different types here, whether it's a uh, distributive, hypovolemic, problems with the heart. And so when it comes to shock, you got to figure out what is, what type of shock is it, and then you're going to see treatment depends on the type of shock. I'm not going to treat sepsis the same way I'm going to treat an aortic dissection. And so that's what we're going to cover in the next uh, subsequent videos.